the Meteor 65 Pro 04, better FPV's smallest drone for the 04 Air unit. Now the Meteor series has been extremely popular among pilots, especially if you do a lot of racing or if you're flying indoors, especially during whip season. So let's open this up and see how it looks. All right, first thing is the foam. And all we see here is a bag here with some spare propellers. Looks like a cord here to adapt from the flight controller to a USB-C, a screwdriver, and also a cable here for the O4 air unit. This is extremely important, so make sure you don't lose this bag right here. Next up a bag here with some hardware. Looks like some screws to actually secure the actual VTF to the board. A spare antenna, which is pretty good. We'll be using this today. And the camera mount here, which is the special sauce here to dampen out the vibrations going to the camera. We also have the canopy, which is a redesign here specifically for this drone, as well as the O4 Air unit. Finally, we have the Meteor 65 Pro right here. It looks pretty interesting. It looks like a different color frame here. And we'll talk more about this in a few seconds. Besides that, you have a QR code here to go to their website and to get support as well. Okay, so here it is, the Meteor 65 Pro 04. This thing is kind of light here. So let's see how much this weighs with the canopy. We're looking at 18 grams, which is not too bad. Very light, not as light as the Air 65 here, but this already has the VTX built into it. Although it's an analog VTX, it was built into it. Now, once you factor in the actual VTX, the 04 Air unit, which is around 8.2 grams, That'll make this a little bit heavier. And we'll wear this once we install the VTX in this drone. Okay, so let's take a closer look at this Meteor 65 Pro 04. And at first glance, this thing looks very similar to the, all the other Meteor 65s on the market, but there's some small incremental improvements on here, but they are very significant for this whole thing to work. Now the big thing here being this flight controller on here. First, let's talk about the motors and props on this. This is a 802 SC. This is a 19,500 kV motors, almost identical specs to the one on the previous version, the 2022 version of the 65 Pro. So no big deal there. My concern though is that this is going to be a little bit heavier drone compared to that original drone. So we'll see if this is enough thrust to keep this thing in the air. We'll see. That might affect the efficiency. Now connected to the motor, we do have a gem front propeller on here. This is a 35 millimeter propeller, which is pretty standard from any of the other drones in the market. You also have the spares here as well. Now the frame right here looks pretty cool. They do offer this frame in multiple colors here. I do have the gray color one here, but this looks very durable and it looks very strong. Now Beta FB usually makes really good drones, a combination of durability and lightweight, and this is no different right here. So we'll see how durable this is. Now connected to the motors, we have this nice flight controller on here. And this is literally the star of the show. This is a game changer, not only for this drone, but I would say for Tiny Loops as a whole. Now this is an all new Matrix flight controller. This is the F4 processor in here with 12 amp ESCs, guys, 12 amps. That's pretty much overkill for a drone of this size. I do suspect that maybe, maybe other manufacturers or maybe you guys will use the same flight controller and put it into larger 1S drones, maybe drones with bigger propellers. So it's cool to see a drone or a flight controller here with 12 amp ESCs. Typically you'll see five amp and maybe six amps, but to have 12 is crazy. You're gonna have some really robust ESCs on this one here. Now besides that, this flight controller also has a built-in Express LS receiver. It is serial based, which is pretty cool. You can update your firmware on the receiver independent of the firmware on the flight controller. Now the big highlight of this whole flight controller here is the actual BEC on here. Now this is a specific flight controller made to handle the O3 and the O4 air unit. Now I kind of chuckled because why would you put a O3 air unit on a drone of this size, very light. But as I said before, you can probably use this flight controller on other drones. Now the cool thing about this one here is that this BEC provides five volts at three amp to run those VTXs. This is kind of unheard of and probably one maybe the only flight controller currently on the market that can support that. And that's only because these VTX by DJI draws a lot of current. We've seen other drones in the market like the Pavo 20, maybe the Pavo Pico, they have a bigger flight controller, but to have a 1S flight controller that can support that VTX is amazing. That means you can run down the 1S battery below say three volts and still have five volts going to your VTX. It really is a game changer. 
your VTX is not gonna brown out. And if you're using a DJI controller, typically if you have a brown out in the VTX, then you'll also lose control of the drone. And if you do wire your VTX, say 04 area to the actual voltage, the battery voltage, once it goes below 3.7 volts, it's just gonna fail and brown out. Now talking about battery life, beta FD says you can get around two minutes to two minutes and 15 seconds of flight time uh, with their recommended 1S batteries. We have them right here. This is a 300 milliamp hour 1S lava battery. This is the recommended battery by them. I wonder if we can fit a larger battery in here. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know, this one fits pretty snug on here. Now talking about the last one, we have this connector on here. This is the BT 2.0 connector. It does have the newer design connector on here. This is like a 180 degrees. So it's kind of reverse. So you don't have to have that bending of the cord. It's really cool, very simple. And it does make a lot of sense on here. Now this drone here does come as a plug and play as well as a bind and fly. We do have the plug and play version right here. And we do have to include our VTX here. Now I do have my 1X VTX here on my Pavel Femto. I'm just gonna take this out of this uh, canopy here and transfer it to this drone. Now this is a pretty cool 2S drone here. This has a bigger power source here, so 2S batteries. And it's in the same kind of category as the Pavel Pico. Now if you wanna see a full review on this one, I've done that and I'll leave a link above and below so you can take a look at it. Now as we said before, this flight controller here is made specifically for the 03 and 04 system which is pretty cool because those VTX has like a plug and play system. There's a plug on the VTX and you can just plug it to the flight controller and they've done that with this 1S board. Now that does increase the weight a little bit, but it does eliminate the need to solder this to the actual board. Now, as you saw before in the packaging here, we do have that harness right here. So you can just plug this into the flight controller and plug the other end into the VTX. Anyways guys, I'm gonna install the O4 air unit in my canopy attach it to this drone, and then we'll take the Meteor 65 Pro 04 for a test flight. Okay, so we're back from our flight test and the Meteor 65 Pro 04 did a really good job. Now, initially I flew this drone indoors and it was initially a handful to fly. Now, it's typical with any kind of small, especially tiny loops, that it will show your deficiencies as a pilot. Now, throttle management is crucial with these smaller drones, and this drone here is no different. But after a few minutes, you get the hang of it, and this thing here flew pretty great, guys. This thing has a lot of power and can get you into a lot of trouble if you don't manage it too well. So, good thing for these ducks here, it won't do much damage to your house, but this thing has a lot of power for indoor flying. Now, later on, I did fly this thing outdoors. And guys, if the winds are over five miles an hour, you're gonna have a hard or difficult time flying this. And that's true for any whoop of this size. Now, it took me a few days to find a nice calm day with some white winds. We've been having a lot of winds for the past couple of days. And this thing flew even better outdoors, guys. As I said before, the winds have to be below five miles an hour, and this thing really shows its capabilities. You can really stretch its legs, and you can do some basic acro maneuvers with this. Besides that, the tune on this drone is really good. I think Beta FD has these tunes down packed on these smaller drones. No freak out on the flight controller. It just worked really well, guys. Now, initially, I did think that this O4 was gonna be a little bit too heavy for this drone. But guys, as I said before, this thing flew very well. Now talking about the extra weight on this, let's wait it since I have the VTX now installed on this drone. And with the O4 light, around 28 grams, which is not too bad. And with the recommended 300 milliamp hour 1S battery, we're looking around 37 grams. So guys, it's not the lightest thing in the world. It's not as light as the Air 65 right here, which is, we said this was 28, 28, 29 grams, and this thing should be around 17 to 18 grams. So 10 grams more, but I do think it's a really good compromise considering you have a 4K camera that can be stabilized in the drone or in gyro flow. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Overall, I do think that this here is a pretty good package and flight characteristics, if you want a fun drone, this could be the one for you. That leads us to the visual of the Meteor 65 Pro HD. And my first concern, obviously, as I said before, was the weight. Now the O4 on here is pretty light, only 8.2 grams or so. It's a huge improvement over the O3 air units. Now the next thing here was image quality. That was my second concern. And guys, the O4 air unit kind of installed very neatly on this drone. Now I didn't show that in this video, but Beta FD has a pretty cool DIY how to install this. It's pretty straightforward, guys. It's just four screws and the canopy on here. 
it's a plug and play with this VTX and this nice flight controller on here. So it was straightforward. Now besides that, the flight controller here is, it did a really good job. It interacted really great with this VTX. And we're talking about the power and voltage going to the actual VTX here. Now find this joint here, I can get down, well I flew it around 3.3 to 3.2 volts. I never wanted to have an issue with the VTX powering down or browning out. Now that leads us to the image quality of the O4. And this thing here was really good guys, surprisingly really good. And that's only because I did use this camera here on another drone, this is the Pavo Femto. And although the image was really good and clear, I did have some vibrations and jello with the Femto. So we are using the same dampen mount system here for the camera. And I said, oh man, is this gonna transfer over to the Meteor 65? And guys, this thing was amazing. It was smooth. I spoke earlier about the image quality in the previous video. The same thing holds true here. This is a very sharp image, kind of washed that image high contrast, high saturation, but you can dial it back a little bit in the goggles if you want to, and I would highly suggest that. We're still struggling with the ND filter on this, just for the motion blur for cinematics on here, but overall, the image on this is spectacular. Now, one thing I wanna talk about here is the feel of view. The feel of view didn't change on this. It's the same from drone to drone. It's kind of weird though. I did have a bigger issue with it on the Femto, but with the 65 Pro right here, I, I don't know if the drone is a smaller, although you are shooting more gaps with a smaller drone like this. I didn't really have a big issue with the field of view on this one. Now, stabilization is the same as any Air 04 Air unit. You just put this thing in gyro flow and the image just is stabilized. It's as simple as that. It's kind of a no brainer. You just plug it into the, uh, the app and it does everything for you. Obviously you can tweak it if you want to, but I had some really good results with this. Uh, even when the wind was above five miles an hour and there was some shakes in the drone, you know, Gyroflow kind of took that out and it looked buttery smooth, guys. What do you think? But overall, the actual visuals on this drone is pretty impressive and I don't think you'll be disappointed. All right, talking about voltage for the actual VTS, let's talk about the battery life on this drone here. Now, I flew this drone here with the recommended 300 milliamp hour 1S battery. Pretty small, these lava batteries are pretty good. Now beta FPV says you can get around two minutes and 42 minutes and 45 seconds of flight time. But with my mixed plan, I did get around between one minute and 45 to around two minutes and 20 seconds with these batteries. That's what makes flying. And I got that both with indoor and outdoor flying, surprisingly. Um, so uh, now that's with me landing around 3.3 volts. I try not to damage these batteries. I know some guys go really low. So I'm landing around 3.3 volts around there. And once I disarm, the battery kind of recovers or rebounds to around 3.5 to 3.6 volts. So technically I could take this down a little bit lower instead of 3.3, I could land this around 3.2, maybe 3.15 volts and get maybe another extra 20 seconds or so of flight time. I didn't really try to because I didn't want to damage these but that is extremely possible. Obviously, as I said, the voltage does rebound to around 3.5 to 3.6 volts. Now, I also did try some flight time with some older or used lava batteries that I had, and I did get a decrease in performance. These are actually new ones, but I did get a decrease in performance with my older batteries around, let's say one minute and 20 seconds to maybe high end of a one minute and 40 seconds. So your performance and flight time may vary depending on the quality of your batteries. But overall, I had a good experience with these batteries, no issue. I just wish it was longer because this drone here is so fun. You're talking about a tiny drone that has so much range. And, you know, I guess I'll talk about it right now. You know, you have Express LRS on here. It works really well. We know about Express LRS, especially with these boards. You can get really far with these drones. And then you combine that with the O4 transmission system. You're easily going to outrange the battery on your drone, guys. You're never going to have a fail safe. You're never going to lose video with this. And if you're gonna get around two minutes to two and a half minutes of flight time, there's only so much you can do in a minute or a minute and a half. Because if you go out a minute and a half, you still have to come back in a minute and a half. And that's gonna be around three minutes, right? So you only have two minutes and 40 seconds of flight time. So you can't really get too far with these batteries. Uh, I wish there was longer flight time, but I know that's a compromise with these smaller propellers and this O4 air unit on here. So overall, what do I think about the Meteor 65 Pro O4? Well, I do think that this is a really cool package. 
and Beta FD has a pretty much a winner on their hands. Now, is this the lightest drone overall? Not really. There is a compromise, but for what you get, it really isn't a big sacrifice. Yes, you do have smaller and lighter drones like this Air 65 right here, but this is analog. You're gonna get DJI penetration range on here. You have Express LRS. You have a powerful and strong ESC and a flight control that gives you the three amps for your BEC. You do get a lot of capabilities in this small package right here. So this would be the perfect drone, guys, if you wanna have digital to fly indoors or maybe even racing, guys. Now, because these air units here are kind of pretty good for racing. You can actually put these things into race mode. You get 25 milliwatts and it really doesn't interfere like the older O3 transmission system. So this is pretty much a capable drone here if you do want to race it. Now, if you want a larger, more professional image from the O4 Air unit, DJ has you covered here with the DJ O4 Pro Air unit here. I plan to do a review on this one, and I'll tell you what I'm gonna be doing with this one here in a future video. So if you wanna see that video, hit that subscribe button, therefore you'll be notified whenever I do drop that video. So thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.